Okay, so we wanted to talk about a, a number of things, marketing math, yeah. ratios, understanding stats, and really the difference between a client, a prospect, a suspect, and how to really think about how all that stuff works. And, yeah. it, it, and, and, and by the way, I mean, I, I, just, I just bounced my head against the wall, you know, with, with some of these big companies. I was, I was, you know, as you know, I have access to a, a bunch of this stuff behind the scenes, and, and one of the big companies, you know, they, they give you prospect list, but really what it is, is it's like data axle, aka sales genie and stuff like that. Yeah, there are people that know, don't know you at all, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and this is probably one of the most important things that any business owner, any entrepreneur, any financial advisor can know. You've got to understand the difference between these different types of clients or different levels of prospect that you may be encountering. Yeah. This is this is really critical. It's really life changing or business changing when you yeah. when you understand it. Yeah. Well, and 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 so you know, let's let, let's start with the um, um, God. The, the name is slipping my mind. I, I would give credit. Jay um, Abraham, I thought was no, no. Good. That, that this okay. is. Uh, um, um, well respected within the financial uh, oh. uh, industry, uh, but I was I was reading his material on marketing, which didn't really have much material on marketing. Uh, truth be told, pretty common. Uh, but but he made a statement that we're in a business where everybody needs our services. Well, to me, that's the worst marketing statement ever in the history of the world. Even to say that out loud, right? Sure. Is really is you want to pick what your perfect client is. And you want to go figure out where they hang out, and and go find those people, right? And that's not a prospect; that's a suspect, right? But we we start with there's the entire world, and now I don't want the entire world. In fact, I I want most of the world not to even care that I exist. I want to figure out who my perfect client is. Uh, some people call that avatar. Make an avatar of my yeah, perfect uh, persona client. or avatar. Sometimes people yeah. say that now, but right. I think avatar is a better idea. Yeah, yeah, or persona. But I want to be able to picture who my perfect prospect is, and then figure out where they hang out. And all I have so far is I have a suspect. I have somebody who looks the part, who I think would be a good client, who maybe looks alike to use Facebook's language, a look alike of maybe my current client base. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's really important just to anchor in the idea that when we talk to a lot of advisors, we say, well, who do you want to market to? And they go, well, everybody, everybody needs me. Every, I want to work. And the idea is that if I market to the whole world, and for a lot of them, they, th they think it's a five mile geography around yeah. their business, yeah. which is another mistake. Which is but really stupid. If they, if they market to the whole world, I'll have more possible clients, therefore I'll have more business. And it's exactly the opposite idea of what you should be doing. It's, it's counter, and I, I understand that can be counterintuitive. It, it, I, if you market to more people, if you had more fish, you'd be able to catch more fish, but that's not really the case. Um, if, if I was fishing, you don't see a, a, a salmon fisherman going after all the fish in the ocean. He goes after salmon. In, in whatever other kind of fish. Well, in fact, there's a commercial now. There's an iPhone app, and I forget what the heck it's called. But basically, it tells you where the best spots are to catch the best uh, uh, type of fish. I don't fish. Oh. You know, I don't think you either. You no, either. I don't either, but that but, is interesting. But if you if you did, right? Yeah. And, if, you know, I'm in Colorado, a great place not to go for marlin, but to go for trout, I yeah, guess. Yeah, sure. But I would want that, you know, yeah. where, where are they biting, where is the most, you know, what lake is, you know, what, where, what are the best spots, one thing or another. But, I mean, even using that analogy is I don't just like throw, you know, throw it out into the lake if I'm, if I'm smart about it. A friend of mine is a professional fishing guy, right? He's got the big, whatever they call him, big boat yeah. and all the, all the things, stuff right. and he does the competitions. and you With know. the chair. Yes, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. Shows what either one of us know. Yeah, the boat, but, the chair. But I mean, they have the little sonar things, yeah. right? And they have the now they have an app, and they can tell on their app where they're where they're biting. But that's it. You got to know what what kind of fish, what kind of fish, yeah, and, and what what, ba what bait they're attracted exactly. to, exactly, and where they all hang out. So you can go you can go fish in the right spot where they hang out. Know which one you want, and know what bait they're attracted to. Yeah, and it's the same thing for your clients. In every business, you got to know what you're looking for. It's not marketing to everybody, so that that's got to get anchored in your head, and that's who your suspects are. Mm -hmm. 
Those aren't prospects, and it's important to distinguish that term, so we're going to explain it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a suspect is who you've targeted that you would like to be able to get interested, who, who you'd like to attract. And there's all kinds of marketing examples we can, we can give of people doing this poorly, but also uh, uh, mistaking the idea of suspect and prospect, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so what we think is, once we build that avatar or that, you know, that, that profile of who we want, what we think is every one of them should want our service. But in reality, and um, Ogilvy's great comment, he, he was the uh, uh, inspiration for the TV show Mad, Mad Men. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, his line was, you're, marketing, you're not marketing to a standing army, you're, you're uh, uh, marketing to a constant parade of humanity. But most of what he meant by that was, is not that everybody in any geography is moving all the time, but what he meant by that is their lives are changing constantly. They're getting married, they're getting divorced, they're getting, uh, uh, they just have the new job, they have an inheritance that come in. Uh, six months ago, they hadn't sensed their own mortality and, you know, their brother-in-law, um, you know, died or something. Their but, dog died, yeah, something yeah, else yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But they have, they have points at which they're immune to paying attention and points at which they're really interested. And sometimes you can predict that. You know, if you sell cars, there's an itch cycle, right? So I start marketing to them two years after they bought the car. Three years is kind of the, where, where most people would change. So if I was a car salesman, I would know everybody I've ever sold a car to to make sure I'm really in front of them in two years sure. and I'm you know, on top of it. But usually it's you, you know what that avatar, that perfect profile is of a, of a suspect. And then you're going out to them, but you're going to be hitting a pool where maybe 90% of them are kind of immune to paying attention. But 10% are, are you know, in, in buying mode. They're in, in the mode of looking. Uh, maybe they currently have somebody, if you're marketing to, you know, 58-year-olds, uh, they may already have an advisor, but we know the stats are they're usually not highly impressed. Yeah, 60%, 60 of people are unhappy with their yeah. current financial advisor. Yeah. 60%. And, and, and at the very least, unimpressed. Right. Right. Um, or it may be that, that for whatever reason, a life event hit that they're now receptive. You know, the Dan Kennedy... Uh, uh, story, which I think is a good one to, to use his, is, you know, we can identify with he had the first divorce, right? And so people are mailing him uh, furniture catalogs and mailing him uh, inserts in the newspaper and there's ads on TV and, you know, there's the guy in Denver, it's the guy with the lions, you know, yeah. uh, American Furniture, yep. our friend, uh, a Mattress Mac in, in, in Houston has all this. But his comment was, I came home one day and she had left with all the furniture and now I've got a house that's empty except for the cat she abandoned. And the day before he came home to an empty house, he paid attention to no furniture stuff. And the day he came home, whoever hit him next, he was going to buy a bunch of furniture. Right. right. But it's a dramatic story, but it's how most people really are is there's a point at which it dawned on them that they needed to worry about this, so they should right. be focused on it. Or a point at which they just got disgusted with whatever they're currently doing, right? And if you're not in front of them at that point, then you don't get them. Yeah, and as, so, as you said, sometimes that can be predicted, and sometimes that won't, can't be predicted. And if, you're, if your ideal client, your suspect is, you know, we have one uh, client we're working with that works with divorced, uh, I think divorced women specifically, yeah. so he can, get lists of people that are newly divorced and he could be mailing and emailing and texting and, and doing work with uh, targeting them specifically. But for a lot of you, you're not, you're working, your ideal client isn't predictable. So you're going to be marketing constantly to your list and you have to keep on marketing to them for when they wake up, when they pay attention, when they notice. And the ones then that we're going to talk about turn into prospects and what the difference between those suspects, the ones that meet your criteria, and when they turn into prospects, what the difference between those two things are and how you market to them differently. Yeah. Well, and so, to, 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 to leapfrog off of that example, I have a friend who has multiple law firms in different cities that does divorce. And he wrote a book called Confessions of a Divorce Assassin. And, 
and, and, and he focuses we on. We should have read that. I should have read that to you a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But that's uh, another story for uh, a different. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, should, Jeff should have because yeah. he specializes in mediation. Yeah. So he tells people not to, what my phrase, but not to put attorneys' kids through college. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, that's always my rule is if I'm going to put anybody's kids to college, I want it to be I your created, own. I yeah. created them, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, um, but what he does is he's got the book, and he markets it to an audience that isn't file hasn't filed divorce yet, but a percentage of them are thinking about it statistically. So and he's predominantly focused on women. So he's he's focused on women of a certain age group, and I forget what his criteria is. But he's getting to them while they think about it, because he wants them to come to him first uh, before all of a sudden they drain the bank account, because that they don't do him any good if they've already drained the bank account right. and arguing about everything. Uh, and then a perfect tie would be now you're going to show them how to get divorced amicably and have money when they get done rather than give it to the attorneys. And then you could work with them, right? So it's, it's getting to them even one step beyond or before right. what you were talking about, which is why, the, why, why it, 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 I thought about it, is rather than when they filed divorce or when they filed, you know, there's a, another friend works with people who've, who've recently filed bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So he could just go get a public record of everybody who's filed bankruptcy. Which Yeah, again, those are predictable ones. Yeah. And sometimes they're predictable and sometimes they aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But, but then you have a prospect. And that what, what we find is, and this is where we start talking about, you know, current jargon is marketing funnels. Um, but we start talking about follow-up and education and development. And I think what, what, what you and I find with almost everybody is they don't differentiate between somebody who looks like they should be a client and somebody who's actually raised their hand and said, I'm interested, right? And then they don't, yeah, and, and we, can, we can do it on here. That's, that's a good, good, uh, good note you gave me. Yeah. Uh, but, um, um, but they don't differentiate between somebody who should be a client versus somebody who's raised their hand and expressed interest. And then once somebody raised their hand and expressed an interest, they give up on them way too soon, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, you know, in, in funnel is, is kind of a new... Well, it's been, a, it's yeah. been around for a while, yeah. but you know, in marketing terms, but I think people are yeah. using that term more. Yeah. And they start talking about internet funnels because of because even people that aren't internet savvy or right. computer savvy keep hearing these terms. Yeah. So we need to kind of explain it to everybody in a way that really makes sense, uh, so that you're hearing about it in the right way. Yeah, and of course, you know, funnel uh, in the most obvious term is it's a sorting mechanism where you start at the top and you get to the bottom. I tend to think of it more as follow-up steps and on sales conversion steps. And to some extent, they're different, right? And let's start on this side. So on this side is taking somebody who raises their hand and... And raises their hand for, for everybody, just so we're really clear, is somebody that responds to any of your marketing. Yeah. So, th so you've done some marketing, they're originally suspects. So they haven't done anything with you, they don't know you, they're, they have no interactions with you. They just meet your criteria for an ideal client. So if you are working with, and we were talking about divorced uh, people that are impending divorces, and you've got the list of people that have filed for divorce but haven't gotten divorced yet, then those would be suspects that don't know anything about you, but you've marketed to them and somehow they've responded to something on online or they've uh, called you or they've uh, you know been to some event you've done so somehow you've got their information so they know you or they've uh, they've contacted you yeah that would be changing them from a suspect to somebody that we call a prospect they've moved down this funnel so they when when Steve's saying um, raise their hand our terminology for raising their hand means they've contacted you somehow. Yeah, yeah. It, it could be they filled out a uh, an opt-in form mm -hmm. on a website. It could be they picked up the phone and called you. It could be they showed up uh, to a, a client event that was designed to generate referrals, uh, and you captured their information there. It, it you know it could be any number of things. So, yeah, but that shift from suspect to prospect, that shift from being one of your ideal clients but don't know you to somebody that has responded to you is enormous. Yeah. They could be 10 to a hundred times more responsive from that point down. So you can 
now target them more specifically. You can spend more money and energy and time on those guys. Yeah. Well, the, the example, I mean, I'm going to get myself in trouble on this one, but um, uh, it's Dan Kennedy's example. So anybody, if you're pissing him by, by off, get, get pissed at him. But he tells the example of, if you don't know it, uh, almost every state sells your driver's license information, right? There's so, information for you if you didn't know that. Yeah. So, so they sell name, mailing address, what other details they have. But on that is also sex, height, and weight. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of weight loss people decided, wow, uh, you know, our, our primary uh, client or customer is female and they are on average X amount overweight. And so, so they take their weight, height and their weight and they can figure out their yeah, BMI. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So they went through the driver's license things and created mailing lists based upon a certain BMI and above. Didn't work very well. And you know, the analysis, well, why wouldn't this work very well? Because we, you know, we know they're female, we know geography, where they live, we know what their BMI is or what, you know, height and weight and, and one thing or another. And we know that they need what we're providing. That's again, everybody needs it. Well, what you didn't know is you didn't know that they cared. Right. You didn't know they had any motivation to lose weight. You didn't know that they were in, all, in any way paying attention. And, and the contrast, by the way, in that industry is there's all kinds of direct response marketing people who are running infomercials and ads and exercise equipment and everything else. Well, those are called response lists. What you can do is you can buy the list of everybody who raised their hand for somebody else's advertising. And you can buy the response list hot list, meaning they're feeding you everybody within the first 30 days. So you know that when they're in heat, when they're chasing this stuff down, if, if you're in that same industry, get rich. You know, real estate is another one where it's easy to do, um, you know, uh, but you could go after people who are looking for exercise equipment. You can look at, go after people who are buying another weight loss product, one thing or another, and market to them immediately. Well, or you could take the list of people that you bought the list yeah. of height and weight right and the list of people buying for exercise equipment mm -hmm. and that would be a really good list to have yeah, yeah, yeah. because overlay. that list that list you'd know that they're looking for both of those things yeah. but the list of people that just have height and weight as you said that's just a suspect list yeah. they met our ideal characteristics but not really you didn't meet the third characteristics yeah. of they also care they give a darn about whether or not they're going to look yeah lose weight. another example if people didn't know if you have an amex card right and so if I was gonna open a high-end steakhouse here, here in the area, I could go to Amex and say, I want anybody who's you know, dined at uh, uh, this level of steakhouse or higher over this period of time. And I could literally do the, if they paid on their Amex card, I could be going after all of my competitors' customers with Amex's support and help because they'll, they'll give you that list. Yeah, right? it's surprising. So, you think that Facebook is the only company that is Knowing about your private information, but no, it's a, even the even your government with the the uh, uh, driver's license information and everywhere. It's this is this is pretty common for yeah. forever. What? Um, and to Facebook's credit, they were buying up you know anybody's data that they could get. Still are aggregating a bunch of that data, so it's not just coming up with click data. It's coming up with all that other stuff. Yeah, and we're all in favor of this, by the way, because we want to use it. We like this stuff. So that we're not, we're in favor of all this because we want to use this for you so that you can market better for your business. Yeah. So uh, keep that, keep that information coming. But so, so going back to this, you know, most people are, are, are familiar, but here's a, a, a opt-in page of some sort, right? So I have an opt-in, let's say I have an opt-in on my website that says, Here's a free report on blank, right? College planning, retirement planning, how not to run out of uh, income in retirement. Um, you know, the coming Biden tax plan, how it's gonna affect your retirement. I mean, you, you know, any, any number. We're gonna go through a lot of these in another segment yeah. on how to build this level of yeah. type of marketing as well. Yeah. So don't we'll focus too much on this, yeah. but it's something that they would wanna to respond to. Yeah. So building something appealing that they would respond want to respond to. By the way, almost all the websites we see and marketing we see is super lame here. It's set an appointment, it's horrible. Which, yeah. which which is which is we'll go through this in the. We don't have time for this today, but there's a lot of reasons why that's horrible and it just sucks. Yeah. So well, it's skipping a step. It, it's it, it's yeah. skipping a step. It's trying to get them down here, yeah. and you have to start with a, a more attractive step that's softer and easier up top. Yeah, it could be a, a, a 
they register for a webinar. It could be a a, uh, um, a pretend live automated. And, and this and it might depend on the type of yeah. suspect that you have coming in that you're marketing to and why you're marketing yeah. in the media. So there's a lot of other reasons why these might be different depending on what's up top above this. Yeah. And, and what we'll always build is a sequence where the minute they raise their hand, we're going to assume two things that are contradictory. You gotta be able to keep more than one idea in your mind at, at any one time. One is they may be ready to buy today. Two is they may need to be educated for as long as, as uh, uh, necessary in order to buy. Yeah, right? this is really important. Yeah. Make sure those two things are here. Just because they respond doesn't mean they're ready to buy now, but it might mean they're, they're ready, ready to, buy. to buy now or ready to move forward with you now and yeah. get an appointment yeah, yeah. with you now. So that's really critical. Well, and, and, and by the way, you know, on Facebook, I, it, you and I both play prospect for every advisor that we can, you know, come up with. And almost all of them use Facebook lead pages, ask a couple questions, and then ask you to set a time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what, what, what happens is, is um, if that's the only response mechanism, they're just getting those people who are ready to talk to a salesperson. Because that's the way people feel, right? Is, you know, no matter how much you say, we'll give you free advice on your, you know, your retirement plan. What they're hearing is, I'm going to set a time with somebody who's going to try to get me to buy something. Yeah, it, it, that's important to think about. So up here, these are up here before they would come into your funnel mm -hmm. or be, come into your world, whatever, however you want yeah. to think about this. There are people that meet your criteria. They, they don't know you, they don't know anything, and you're going to market it to them. What Steve's saying is a few of them might be willing to just meet with you. Yeah. So you market to them and they'll meet with you. Okay, that's gonna be some people, some small percentage. Some people might be willing to get some free information from you. And because they got that free information, maybe now they'd be willing to meet with you because they got something free from you. Some other people might be willing to get that, might like that free information and then might like to get some follow-up information for a while, but it might not be the right time for them yet to meet with you. Yeah. And like we just said, we had somebody nine years. Nine years. And, and we've had people longer than that. That was Marty. Was it? Yeah. I've had people in my businesses for 15 years, and, and by the way, then their, their grandkids yeah. come later. No, no, this was before he, before he did anything. He had been on our list getting mail, getting email, getting mess texts for nine years before he you know, threw in the towel and decided that he better hire us. But we've had other people in some of our other businesses for like grandkids, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so so we can give you examples for 20 years yeah. where, you know, they're getting information for decades sometimes and then they finally decide to get with you. And by, and you know, in, in, in this business, that's, that would be a really common thing. Yeah. So, so understand, now if you think about those three groups separately, the ones that would get call you right away, the ones that would get the information and call you or meet with you, and the ones that would then need more education for a while, you know, all three groups are fine. But in the other example you just gave, most marketing is just come and marry me for day one. Yeah, yeah. And that's why that doesn't work. Well, the, the websites that we, that we look at, uh, I don't know what we looked at the last few months. Uh, several hundred. Yeah, several hundred. I mean... Uh, and, and almost always, I mean, if they're really sophisticated, they have a scheduling link. So they've used Calendarly or we yeah. might schedule once. They've used something that says schedule an appointment now. But the only call to action is con contact us and it has, you know, a phone number or one thing or another. Yeah, the assumption is the website does some of the education and yeah. people are going to screw around on their website for a while. And that's enough education. But that's just not it's not inadequate. So, yeah. so number one, they're either jumping to the bottom appointment yeah. or even if they did have a free report, the education follow-up is not very good yeah. is the example we mentioned a while ago. Yeah. So you're just missing out on so much of the possible business that you could get. Well, or frankly, they're like me, right? To me, you know, things that I'm interested in that I'm going to buy is I mean, it's pulling teeth for me to get somebody, for me to get on the phone with somebody. Mm -hmm. And for God's sake, if they want me to come and, 
you know, get a fifty dollars steak to listen to a two hour presentation. Screw that. I'm not going to. Right. Do that, right. right? Um, you know, because you and I are both always in the yeah, boat. The, you know, we're the same way about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, one humans, but two is my time's worth a thousand dollars an hour, and you're not going to bribe me for twenty bucks to. You know, yeah, if I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to buy. Yeah, yeah. but but also is I'll educate educate myself, and I'll watch some stuff, and I'll read some reports. I mean, you could give me five hundred pages, and I'll read it, right? But you know, it's pulling teeth. Um, like like the you know, we just committed for a. Uh, an ad campaign, and mostly they would have talked to somebody five, six times, one thing or another. I had gone through the media kit, gone through everything, and this was 10 minutes of negotiation, we're done, and by the way, you know, email me, but don't expect me to read it, right? Um, uh, so you've got to deal with all kinds, and we're the, at the extreme, right, right? Right, But what you want is you want on the website, on everything you do, some reason for them to raise their hand that's short of give me a call right now and make an appointment. And you want different educational material that's not going to teach them how to do it themselves, but it's going to teach them, you know, why you're good at what you do, what you do, and how that works, right? And then you want to be able to drip on them forever. And I'm not talking about just email, but you're, you're, you're wanting to drip on them forever, share YouTube videos, share other information forever until they're ready to, uh, uh, to make this next step and set an appointment with you. Yeah, and, and this doesn't, this isn't as, you know, when we say forever, it isn't as cumbersome as you think. We help with this. Yeah. We're going to help you build this out. But this is not, again, not just email. No, it's all it's automated. Mail. It's mail. Yeah, yeah, it's automated, but it's going to be mail, text messaging, and whatever media. Maybe there'll be new yeah. media in the next five years that we have to throw in here. But what has to happen is they just continue to get warmed up, warmed up, warmed up until they're ready. Yeah. But, but this is, these are prospects in here. So suspects are the ones that are above this. That's your They're, avatar. Yeah, yeah, this is the avatar. These are the ones that are meeting your criteria. They don't know you. Once they know you, they come in here, and this could be, again, a lot of different ways, not just this one way. But then they start, this, this, they start being part of your world. Then we can start spending money and time on them. And, we could spend, you know, as the example we mentioned, uh, I don't know if it's in this segment or a different one, but a client might be worth $5,000, they might be worth $50,000 over their whole lifetime with us. Well, we could send them $25 worth of direct mail. We could send them a box of stuff. We could send them, depending on the type of client, the type of avatar we're looking for, we might be able to direct mail them a bunch of pieces. We might, you know, on certain times of the year, send them a holiday card, send them certain pieces. So there's all kinds of things we can do, but we can spend more money on them once they get into our world. Could we do that to everybody in the whole world if we were, let's say, working with divorced, uh, divorced women between 45 and, and 55? We couldn't do that to every single suspect that was out there because it'd be too many and we wouldn't know, just like yeah. the weight loss example, if weight loss companies sent direct mail to every um, woman that was over a 31 BMI, they'd go broke It would they, because the response rate wouldn't be very high. But once they responded to some marketing that they had uh, put out there and they knew they were interested because now they knew they cared, now they could start marketing to them more and giving them direct mail pieces, maybe send them a package, now they could have outbound telemarketing to them, they could do all kinds of other stuff. That would be well worth their time and effort and money. So it's very important to know the difference between suspects and prospects, and then what you can do to market to them from then on. Yeah, and and you know we're gonna we're gonna run out of time here, but to 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 look at all of this is, I really want that it'll be a conversation for a different topic or a different conversation. But let's say that I'm advertising on LinkedIn, and I'm advertising on Facebook, and I'm advertising with direct mail, and I'm advertising with you know go through the list. Maybe I'm buying leads from smart ass or doing Google maybe. AdWords, maybe yeah, yeah Google yeah. AdWords. I have to know what my cost is for a click and know what my conversion ratio is from click to um, a prospect. In other words, they filled out a form. And sometimes it's a, a, a multi-stage form. Maybe I got a name and an email address and I got, or a phone number, and then I got a, a, mail, a mailing address and I got some demographic information, how much assets they have, what their income is. And I've got to decide at what point I've got enough information that they're, they're worth, worthwhile for me. 
but I got to know how much a click costs. I've got to know how much a prospect co costs, which is an easy computation if I know what my ratio is. Then I've got to know what an appointment cost, and then I've got to know what a new client cost, right? And if I don't know my conversion rates at each stage, I don't know those numbers. And starting down here, I have to know, you know, how much are they going to spend immediately? How much are they going to spend with me in the first year? How much are they going to spend with me over the lifetime? Uh, Michael Kitches, I like to give credit any, anytime they did, had a great report on advisor marketing. One, one of the example he used is, you know, 500,000 assets under management, 1% fee, 5,000 a year, average of 20 years, um, uh, i.e. Uh, $100,000. And so if I know that lifetime value is $100,000 and I know the first year is $5,000, then how much am I willing to spend to get a client? And then how much am I willing to spend to get an appointment? I can extrapolate. How much am I willing to spend to get a prospect? How much am I willing to spend to get a visitor to the site or a click? However you want it. And if I don't know that math, I don't know how to put all this stuff together. Yeah, and I think the question to ask yourself is, if you're going to get a $500,000 of assets under management from one client, and you're, that's making $5,000 in a year, the first year, would you be willing to spend $500? Yeah. See, I'd spend $500 all day long. That's a 10 to 1 return on your first year. Well, you and I would with, spend $5,000. We would spend $5,000 because yeah. that's a 20 to 1 return on investment lifetime value yeah. for the client. So, but you even, know, even adjusted for time value of money and all that. Absolutely, so it's a shitload of money. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. exactly. Yeah. The 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 thing is that most that, of the people we talk term, to, yeah, shitload market. of money. Yeah, that's, yeah. But but most of the people we talk to, oh, but I spent you know fifty dollars. It took or five a hundred dollars. I can't spend a hundred. They, they complain about spending very small amounts of money. Mailing get a postcard's expensive. Mailing, mailing or spending $20 or $30. Now, I understand if you were going to spend that for suspects. You can't because you don't know if they care yet. You don't know if they're interested. But once they raise their hand, the dollar amounts change because the response rate at this point is much higher. That's why it's really important to know the difference between suspects and prospects. Yeah, yesterday we were talking to... Uh, uh, a group of clients and I had said, you know, if nothing else, go play prospect to any of Fisher's stuff, go play prospect to a uh, smart advisor. Because mm -hmm. they're very good at asking enough questions to get to an idea and, and what they're doing behind the scenes, they're sorting out, here's somebody who's not worth spending any money on, here's worth somebody worth spending a little bit, here's somebody worth spending a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they're sorting it out behind the scenes. Right. Okay, right. well, you know, on that note, we're kind of running out of time, but uh, we'll pick up on marketing math, on statistics, on benchmarks and ratios in a, in a different section. But it, we, we want to, to start with, there's a big difference in value between somebody who's in the general public versus they very narrowly fit your target audience versus they raise their hand. At, you know, this, the general population of the United States, it's, you know, each lead isn't worth much, I, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if, if anything. But very tightly, what magazine they subscribe to, what they like to buy, what the, you know, income level is, how old they are, where, you know, where they live. The more data you get, especially response data, then it makes it much more valuable. But the real click point is they've raised their hand and said, yes, I'm interested in what you have to offer. And that's when you really go, uh, again, if they're qualified, you really go to town on staying with them forever and educating them, but also really working hard to convert them immediately. Yeah, and don't forget to go to advisorwealthmastery.com. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned that before on our call today. Uh, there's a lot of information. You, get, you can get a whole package of information that helps you walk through a lot of these steps and has content so that you can use it e that you can use it each of these steps. So it's advisorwealthmastery.com. Fill out the form there, you get a big package of information that we can help you with. Yeah, well there's a lot of free resources on the site. Yeah, and a lot of information that follows up on what we've talked about today. Yeah.